Right then peeps, what I'm doing here, I'm just fitting the um, fittings to the tank. What I've got is the recirculating fittings at this end. So that will pass through into the cupboard, to the heat exchanger and the pump. I've got the outlet there to go to the water pump. That's fitted one centimetre higher than these two, so that the circulation pump never runs dry. Now I'm fitting the overflow to the top. It says to use a 9.5 mil drill bit, but what I found is if you use a 9 mil drill bit, 9.5 is a bit of an odd size toy, actually 9 mil is a bit of an odd size toy. If you drill a 9 mil hole, um, this will literally thread itself into the plastic. If you drill a 9 mil hole, it literally just, 9.5 mil hole rather, it literally just slides through. It doesn't seem to damage the threads. Also, once you put this in and you're inside doing up the brass nut, be very careful not to over tighten it. Get it hand tight, put a spanner on it and give it a, just a little tweak. Most mechanics know what a little tweak is. You can feel the give in your wrist as you tweak it up. Just be very careful because you can quite easily strip this plastic thread and then you've got to go and buy yourself a new hose connector. So just keep that in mind. Right, I've fitted some plumber's tape to the threads. Always do. Now this is, remember this is a 9mm hole, not a 95 And as you can see, it threads itself in really rather well. Now what I've been doing, this seal seems to be a bit damaged, luckily it's the overflow. What I've been doing is using a 12mm spanner going over giving it a tweak from the outside and so you, till you see this seal just starting to deform just like that that's enough then I go in from inside if I can do this from this weird position with the camera propped up let's have a look and I'm gonna have to do it with my left hand put the nut on be very careful you don't cross thread it what I do is I put the nut on and I turn it backwards and you'll hear it click and drop onto the thread now what I'll do is I'll go inside using the 13 mil and I'll just give it like a quarter of a turn just a little tweak on that brass nut just to snug it up you've already tightened it up and started to deform this seal it's shredded into the plastic with plumber's tape which gives you a good seal you don't need to wrench up on the inside nut. And I'll come back to you in a bit when we start wrapping the tank and insulating it. See you in a bit. Right, I'm just cutting the insulation board to go around the uh, water tank, as you can see there. The holes for the pipes to come out of. This is going to be the back panel. I've cut a little relief in that end for this connector. And I'm going to be sticking set of LEDs along the back which will come on with the fill pump so I can keep an eye on the level the idea being it will light from behind and the front panel will have a slot in it so I can see what the fill level of the tank is um, so I'm just going to do that then I'll put it together and I'll show you the finished article when it's all together right then peeps I've fully insulated the bubble tank I'm going to set you down here while I disappear around the back to show you if I can, where is it? I can't see. They're too close. Let's set it up like that. And I shall go and turn on the, the battery. And you can see my level indicator. As I said to you, I've built in set of LEDs in the back you can't see this very well because the lights fading you can see the light leaking out through there and as it fills up I'll be able to tell what level the uh, tanks at or what level it's not at I haven't taken it all the way down to the bottom because I'm more worried about filling it than unfilling it if that makes any sense than emptying it I'm filling it dearie me anyway this is a bit like a jack-o-lantern 
got a few little gaps around here I could do with filling in but there it is all nicely insulated I may put another layer on the top because that's where most of the heat's going to escape but we'll stick it in the van and see what sort of space we've got all right so that's where it's going to sit obviously it's going to move further up there because these pipes are going to I'm going to drill holes in there for the pipes to go through so I can connect it up so it'll shuffle forward that way a little bit as I say um, I want to keep this accessible um, so I think I may cut another piece of insulation another 25 mil sheet of PI out I'll go on top because obviously most of the heat's going to be lost out from the top I may even cut another two but make them removable make a second one with the hole in here and then a third one that literally covers this lid up as well so I can uh, have the most insulation on the top but that's where we are at the moment that's where the little sight tube is so I can see what's in there um, I'm probably going to cover it with some vinyl just to make it look a bit better at the moment it's just covered in gaffer tape and PIR anyway I'm going to get them holes drilled put it into its final position and uh, I'll show you a bit later when something's actually happened that's worth videoing anyway peeps I'll see you in a bit Right, I'm not sure I will be able to see this, but there's the controller, the flap that controls the heating duct, connected through the floor to the diesel heater, ducting then runs off down through the cupboard to the vent at that end. This is all dead space, so it hasn't cost me anything. Heat exchanger is most likely going to go right where you see it right there so I literally need a couple of centimeters of ducting just to connect it um, I'm not sure yet whether this is going to be possible obviously I'm going to fit it that way around because the pump but I may fit this at an angle I'm not sure whether it's going to create an air pocket up in this corner if not it will be fitted like that at a small angle and the pumps pipes are going to come off of these two here run down into that corner can you see that let's get to the right where that box is the pumps in it that's where the pumps going to sit then where that white wall is there you can see with all the dust and cobwebs the two pipes are going to be drilled through there where they will then come out this side if you remember the other video that's where the tanks gonna be they'll come straight into the tank so literally the pipes are gonna be well they're gonna be six inches to the from the heat exchanger to the pump six inches from the pump to the tank so they're gonna be two runs you're gonna have a foot of pipe at the most literally the tanks going in there I am at the moment knocking about with making a unit for it. The unit's going to sit out further than the other unit that you see here, these cupboards, because it's going to have a cooker on top of it. So I've got to cut down these uprights. I haven't decided what height I'm going to have them at yet. Um, this uprights coming out it's just in there because I haven't got a bar long enough at the moment to stretch all the way across to there that's the one downside of my design um, then I have another bar running across the top here with a work surface on it a wooden work surface with the uh, cooker in it so it'll be water tank this will be a trap a door that opens so I can check on the tank um, I'm gonna put 50 mil of insulation around the tank underneath on top all round I've got some PIR board left then there'll be a shelf in here and Jules my battery will go on top right next to the charge controller keeping all the runs super short and keeping the cable sizing down so I don't really need to use 24 volts or anything fancy like that because I've got nice short cable runs 
Right, so there it is all installed. I haven't got the uh, lights wired up yet. You can see the, the sight glass or the sight gauge there. I think she's dead level. As I say, I'm probably going to put another two layers of uh, insulation on top of this. It won't be taped to it, it'll be separate, so it just sits on top of it so I can lift it off and the next layer will come up to the top of this and then the top layer will literally cover it over complete. And then on top of that there'll be a shelf and then my battery will sit on top of that which will give you somewhere nice and warm to sit. Hopefully not too warm, which is why I'm triple insulating the top, mainly because that's where most of the heat is lost, plus I'll have my battery above it. So. There we go, there's the Bogle water heater so far, all I've actually got to do is wire it all up and build the rest of the cabinet work. I didn't scratch my arse a fair bit while I'm deciding how to do that. I'll see you sometime next week peeps, ta-da!